Hello, National University Academy students. This is Mr. Goyette um, checking back in with you. I uh, was just following up on a, just stop there for a second to break up the video into smaller portions for easy upload and email. Um, this is a continuation of the Unit 1 Chapters 1 and 2 review. Uh, let's go over some key vocabulary, which I pointed out to you just a moment ago. Um, let's go over capital goods. Capital goods are the buildings, structures, machinery, and tools used in the production process. These are all called capital goods. Right here. People are forced to make decisions about how to use resources effectively because resources are limited and wants are unlimited. This is something called scarcity, right? Now, let's go into our opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is some is when you realize you have to give up something to get something else. Um, a, a good example that the um, the textbook makes and our, our, the lecture makes on the on the website is that you are in a clothing store and you see a pair of pants uh, and a t-shirt that you both you like them, you like them both however you you only have enough money for one of the two items so you decide to buy the pants what is the opportunity cost in this situation well the opportunity cost that is the thing you give up is the t-shirt because you realize you don't have enough money to buy both uh, the product's usefulness to a person is called its utility so don't forget utility a product's usefulness is called its utility in truth all economies today are mixed now you will hear um, a kind of polarizing discussion uh, among those uh, who are ardent pol ardent political members of a certain party so if they're republican or or democratic or liberal conservative you'll hear people say talk about how oh socialism is great because it organizes your society and makes things work in an organized manner oh very true um, however and then there's the uh, re uh, Republican minded free market minded person who might say oh please come on now um, you know you have to have Adam Smith's pure model of self-interest and it's the only thing that'll work and an unfettered free market is the only thing that that makes America great. Well, these are all in part very true, but the, the beauty of our system is that it is mixed. And we have things like a police force that is paid for by taxes. We have a military that is pays, paid for by taxes. We have public schools paid for by taxes, all by in and of themselves uh, partly socialistic in the way they're operated and their bureaucracies are set up in such a way to be um, socialistic services. Uh, we have commonwealth things like roads and um, utilities that we use jointly that are social in nature. Individuals and corporations um, may uh, may not own these. They might be commonwealth and shared. Um, no, an individual doesn't own a road. We don't pay a toll every time we want to go over a road, although there may be sections of roads that are. For the most part, our public areas are socially shared. They're commonwealth areas. Um, and then we have our capitalist areas where we go in, buy goods and services where there's competition and free market, and it creates better products, better services through that competition. So it's through that balance that makes it nice. Um, so that the, the book points out that we have mixed economies, not either one of the two there. Um, in which economic systems do individuals answer the basic economic questions? And that would be, of course, in uh, the market economy. In a market economy, the, the, the market I just described in the free enterprise system where I'm an individual, I want to buy a service or a product, uh, I'm going to shop around and find that service or product, my self-interest, the things I need, are going to, those, that collective interest that I have is going to inform me as to what I want. And then I'm going to go to that vendor and whoever's providing that service or product, I'm going to get that product. Um, when the government comes in and fixes prices or says you can only buy this product and creates either a government monopoly or in the free market system if a uh, um, if a competitor buys out all the competitors underneath it forms a monopoly or an oligopoly and creates uh, a lack of choice a lack of truly free market that can evolve out of a capitalist assist, capitalistic system it can also evolve out of a social socialistic controls um, but yes, in a market system, the individual decides, makes this, the basic choices about um, ownership. The feature that distinguishes the U.S. economy from a pure market model is limited government involvement. Um, 
The basic fact of economic life is scarcity. Scarcity, remember, is um, the lack of the lack of resources and unlimited wants. When new technology is introduced, the production possibility curve will shift to the right. This is on page, um, I think it's on page 25. Sorry, page 13. I'm going to skip over that so I can show you where that's found. Page 13, it looks a little bit like this. So turn to page 13 and you'll see that curve that I was talking about. Uh, when technology is introduced, the production possibility curve will shift to the right. In which economic system do individuals answer basic economic questions? I already answered that one. That was the market economy. Um, according to Adam Smith, the invisible hand that leads individuals to do what is best for the society is self-interest. This is the idea that because we all have our own interests, needs, and wants, if we go out and look for those products and services on our own and aren't forced to decide by some unnatural means through the government, a monarch, a uh, socialist government, that since those needs are controlled, they will be naturally regulatory. They will tend to even think, even the playing field and make things better for people overall. Um, this isn't always the case, but it is definitely, the capitalist system is definitely good because it tends toward that. We've just seen in, the, in our economy that that can spin out of control and deregulation can lead to um, problems as well, and we'll go into that later. Economies that are closest to the pure market model are classified as capitalist. A pure market model is where that self-interest is determined uh, by the individual and what I buy, what I choose to get is, is picked up by the individual person um, based on their own needs and wants. Under democratic socialism, individuals are able to influence economic planning by voting in elections for government, government officials. Ownership of, pro of private property is characteristic of free enterprise. Um, when in socialist and in communist nations, you'll see the government owns the means of production, the factories, the businesses, um, and they own the property. So uh, if I want to determine what I want to sell a product for, or how many units of a product I want to put out on the floor, or what services I want to provide for my public, uh, the government's going to come in and tell me what to do. There's going to be a bureaucrat who's going to come in and tell me how exactly how to run my business. This can be a very neg negative and stifling thing for a country. And in nations like India that are democratic, because they have socialist bureaucracies, they suffer uh, to try to stimulate growth. Uh, Japan um, is a country that has no problem stimulating growth. I'm going to take a break here and break up the video into three parts. I'll come right back, stopping for just a moment.